What is going on YouTube fam? We're here. We are finally at our one year anniversary, well close to it, since getting our Ryobi 54 inch zero turn mower. This is their second iteration of these that came out one year ago that uses the 80 volt lithium ion batteries. And I'm happy to bring you guys an update after putting just shy of 30 hours of use through this thing in the past year. As you know, we are in the summertime right now. We're sitting here, it's towards the end of June, 2023. We got this thing delivered to us at the beginning of July last year. So again, we're at our one year recap and I'm excited to share with you all some updates as I know a lot of you have expressed interest in this. I've received a lot of comments on my previous videos and I'd like to just address some of the things from maintenance to my impressions over the past year and things that could be a little bit better so let's hop right into it if you're new to the channel thanks for joining smash the like button hit subscribe so it has been six months since we last talked about the Ryobi mower here and as we ended that video it was as Ryobi had hand delivered us a new 80 volt battery so to get the elephant out of the room we have had one issue with this mower that was something that couldn't be fixed by us but had to be fixed by Ryobi and that was we were having a discharge problem where we were getting different percentages of battery as we were driving this around come to find out we had one of the 80 volt batteries which are the brief size ones that was a dud they delivered us a battery and everything has been good since then so there is just a little preface right there I'll say for the most part everything has gone flawlessly since getting that new battery but the first thing I'd like to talk about is the amount of yard that you should be able to mow with this mower it was touted originally to be around four acres of runtime in my experience, based off my acreage that I have here, I sit on just over two acres, but when you take out things like the house and the tree surrounding us, we obviously don't have that 2.2 acres. But what I'm getting, on average, about a half acre per 25% charge. So with this mower, I would say about two acres to two and a quarter acres is really what I would be expecting if I were buying this mower or if I was talking to somebody about this mower. What I'm getting is about 25% left over battery when I finish mowing my yard. And that's what I've been averaging now over the past, I'd say five to seven mows that I've done on this yard where I'm doing it all at once. We're after about a week and a half to two weeks worth of high grass here, which it can grow pretty fast in Florida, especially when we're in this time of the year with a lot of rain. But that's what I'm averaging. I seem to have about 20 to 25% battery left over at the end of a mow, which is actually great because if you saw my last video, my last two videos, I wasn't even able to finish mowing my yard on a full charge but since we've gotten that new battery since we've learned the lay of our land and we understand the route we should be taking as we mow and we've bumped up the speed at which we're mowing at we're able to accomplish this yard and get it all knocked out in one charge and still have some leftover battery i wanted to start by talking about that because i think that is what's most important to a lot of people buying this is is it gonna fit my needs is it gonna be able to get me a full mow in one charge if you got more than two acres, I think it's gonna be a little bit tough unless you just got one big open land of two to three acres of like prairie land where it's just sitting there with no obstacles and you can throw this thing in fast and you can just do these nice sweeps back and forth. But in reality, most people have obstacles. They're having to maneuver, back up, turn around, maybe hit a spot two or three times to get it cut really, really good. But that's just how it works. But if you're somebody that's going to have to mow more than say three acres, I still don't think this is going to be the mower for you. But then again, other people maybe in cooler areas, not in the dead heat of Florida, might get some different results with the batteries. But for myself, it's just enough to accomplish what I need to accomplish. Next thing I wanted to bring up was the pricing. This thing was around $8,000 right after it got released. So it did go through a price bump of $1,000 on all the models. It is still a high price for a resident residential riding mower. But if you are interested in electric and riding version mower, you're gonna be at at least the $4,000 price point. And depending on the features that you want on your mower and the size, that price is gonna jump up rather quickly. 
personally, I wanted the steel deck on mine. I, I just didn't want to have to worry about anything. I have a lot of, well, let's call it straw grass and some sandy ground here. And that just leads a lot more to a lot more wear and tear on your deck a little bit faster than somebody that doesn't have land like this might experience. So with me having limbs and debris and everything all over the yard and it being very sandy, this deck gets a lot more wear and tear. So I needed to go with something a little bit thicker. And usually to get that, you're having to get into the higher model, higher tier of these mowers. Since they came out with this joystick operated zero turn, but they have another version of these mowers that have come out that's taking advantage of the 80 volt mower. So if you do wanna be more of the two hands on a steering wheel type mower, and you don't wanna have the joystick or go with like the zero turn handles that a lot of mowers have, there is a new line of mowers out there. I personally still love this and we'll get to that in a second. Next, I'll just mention charging briefly. Four to five hours is what it takes to charge this thing from zero to 100. Again, I'm plugging it in typically when it's down to like 15%, 20%. And I notice after about four hours, a guaranteed five hours, I'm fully charged. I do run an extension cord off the outlet that's plugged into. So I'm sure it's not getting the total amperage it could be pumping into this. Um, but either way, if you're slowly charging a product, like trickle charging a battery, that's never a bad thing rather than just pumping it with as much electricity as you can as quickly as you can, which doesn't help your batteries last as long. Let's get a little bit closer to the mower and let's talk maintenance. Okay, going back to some things you might have seen if you've checked out the channel, maybe you saw one of the repair videos I did where I talked about cross cut blade adapter. Uh, that's the adapter that holds the blades on and you have a total of six cutting blades on this deck and they're cross cut, meaning they're mounted this way and you have three different sets of those. Well, there's this little adapter piece with a nut that holds those blades in place. I've actually broken that blade now, that adapter piece, three times. And that was by hitting a limb or an item that was too big to be cut. So there is a safety feature built in so that those blades, th that adapter piece has some little notches on it that will snap and it'll make it so there's not too much pressure on these motors and that it starts to free spin rather than getting stuck on an item. So that's happened to me three different times. And unfortunately, when that happens, you really can't be using the other ones. You don't wanna go take those blades off and mess with the way these motors are running. You don't want it to be spinning a lot faster and freely without those blades on it. So what I've had to do is reach out to Ryo Ryobi when one of those breaks, they send it to me. It takes you know about a week to get that piece in the mail and it's gotten better. I'm definitely more aware, but accidents happen, folks. Accidents happen. And I ran over, there was a stump that hadn't been ground all the way, so it wasn't free to move. I ran over this and rather than it completely stop, it broke that adapter so those blades could at least still spin and they weren't just stuck on something. So that was one of the maintenance things I've had to deal with. And also, if you do get on the phone with Ryobi for maybe something else related to maintenance, maybe just put in an order for one of those cross cut blade adapters just to have one handy because your mower uses three of those. It's a really cheap part, I imagine. Ryobi has yet to charge me for it. I can't see that being more than like a five to $10 piece. So I would go, I would buy one, if not two of those and just keep them handy because the idea is you're gonna have this mower for years to come. Another maintenance item that I need to address is you are supposed to sharpen these blades every 24 to 25 hours of use. There's an actual timer, a counter on the Ryobi mower. So it will let you know as soon as it's time to sharpen those blades. And that might become another maintenance video that we share with you on how to sharpen those blades, but we have not done that yet. So now when I turn my mower on, it's telling me, hey, you you've exceeded the amount of hours that we recommend before checking your blades, making sure they're still sharp. And I'll tell you this, I do believe I need to sharpen these blades because I noticed when I was mowing just yesterday, I ended up with quite a few areas where I needed to go back over them. At the same time, I was mowing on the fastest speed. I also had my blades on the fastest speed. So I might've just been running over those areas a little bit too fast for it being this really thin grass. And then finally, the only other item we've had to deal with in terms of maintenance outside of the battery replacement, obviously, was some flat tires. We have had two flat tires now. Uh, we did run over 
a roofing nail that happened to be in the yard. We pulled that out, we plugged the tires. There was no problems there. I used a standard uh, tire plug kit. And then I ended up running over like a thorn, a super thick thorn from, I don't even know what type of a bush. I noticed it was lodged in the tire the other day. I had no idea if it had gone all the way through. Unfortunately, I pulled it out. I heard the small hissing. We knew there was a little bit of a flat. I thought I had already put slime in these tires, but just to be safe, I pumped some more slime in there, rode the mower around for a short period of time, parked it, pumped it up, and we were actually good at sealed the tire. So that was a nice, simple fix. I know slime's not preferred by everybody, but for something really small like that, it's a lot better than having to disassemble it, do a patch, put it back together. I'd rather go buy myself a $7 bottle of slime, but I would definitely recommend you have yourself a patch kit laying around just in case. And the only other thing I'm gonna mention in terms of maintenance is just keeping this thing clean. All I do when I finish mowing, I take my Ego blower, that's right, an Ego product. I take my Ego blower, I blow the thing off, and that's it. I haven't done anything else to it. I've yet to actually wash this thing. I don't feel like I need to, it's a mower. Uh, but overall, the thing's been staying in good shape. Aesthetically, there's no problems wrong with it. Everything's held up really well for these 27, 28 hours I've been using this. The deck is working fine. Uh, the wheels seem to still have good tread on them. They've been working well outside of those flats that we've experienced. So overall, everything's been working great on that end. So that's gonna wrap it up for maintenance. Now, what better way to wrap up this video than talking about what we've been loving and not loving so much with this mower. I'll tell you one of the things I love the most about this mower is the joystick. Hands down, the joystick in operating one-handed with this joystick with my arm resting here has been phenomenal. I love it, I have no complaints. I, I take that back. I guess the only complaint with the joystick I'll mention is it takes a little bit of learning to get nice and smooth with backing up. It can be very jerky if you try jerking it around too quickly and too much. You do have to finesse it, but you get a hang for it. Obviously, if you're trying to do some backing up, maybe put this thing and get it out of the fast speed, throw it into low, and you're good to go. But again, I think that's the only thing is that you just wanna be a little bit more mindful if you're by a vehicle, if you're by your house, you're by something that is not gonna move if you hit it. You just wanna make sure you're backing up and you're being as careful as you can be. But overall, the joystick's great. I could check something on my phone. I could be drinking a beverage, although you'd be shaking around like while you're trying to drink it. I thought that was gonna be one of the nice features of having a joystick and being able to drink at the same time. Well, let me just tell you folks, yeah, you need a straw or some kind of a, a setup so that you don't have to worry about splashing your drink in your face as you're mowing, because that's a real problem. What else? I love the fact that it's not, it doesn't kill my ears. I can have my headphones in. I could talk on the phone if I really needed to. The noise level of this thing is awesome. The power is awesome. Electric in general is just immediate power, which can be good, that can be bad. When you turn this thing on, for instance, when you first turn it on, the memory hasn't remembered, are you in the slow position, medium, or high? So it's just instant power. So if I turn this on, push forward right away, I'm gonna start going at the max speed until it realizes, oh, he had it in the last setting of such and such, and then it'll slow down. So you do wanna be a little mindful of that when you first turn it on. Don't hop right into just throwing it in. Let everything boot up, give it a couple seconds. You won't have that problem. But then the negative with this immediate power is that there's immediate stopping power as well. And I say that because your brakes immediately, if you apply these brakes, it's an immediate stopping. It's not a slowly push on the brake and your vehicle will slowly slow down. That's not how it works. When you push the brake, this thing stops. Again, that can be good or bad. I'll tell you the reason I don't like it. I think they should have built a seat belt into this because there is a sensor in the seat for weight. If you hit something and maybe it bounced you up out of your seat, this thing would shut off and there's a good chance you'd be thrown forward if you already had that forward momentum and you understand how you know gravity and momentum works. Uh, but when I lift myself out of the seat, not only will the mower stop, the blades will stop. So in terms of safety, that's great. 
But again, if you're going at a really fast speed and something were to happen where maybe, maybe you weren't even paying attention, maybe you lifted yourself up to like readjust yourself in your seat, that could immediately stop this mower. And I've had two occasions now where, I mean, it threw me forward a little bit, not to a point where I flew over, but that could have happened to somebody. Maybe they don't have as much balance as I have. That could have thrown them over. At least they wouldn't have been ran over. They wouldn't have had the, the blades eat them up because that's all gonna stop, but you still would have been thrown forward. So we've hit on the stop and go. We've hit on the power. We've hit on the noise. We've hit on the joystick. I think we just have to brag about electric and it not being gas. I mean, what more to love about it than the fact that it's not gas powered? And that's where I'm gonna get the comments and people arguing saying this technology isn't ready or this isn't good enough. I'm here to disagree. I strongly believe that electric vehicles, electric tools are at a point where they can compete with gas powered. I think there's enough pros and cons to both of those tools to have a fair fight. But at the end of the day, I think electric does reign supreme even with some of their inefficiencies and the newer technology it's getting better and better each day after we get away from these lithium ion batteries i don't think anyone's going to have anything to complain about i'm able to charge this thing up quick enough for residential use where i can get it and put it right back to work the next day so in terms of just not having to smell like gas and being able to start the mower and restart the mower just like that without even thinking about it, you cannot beat that. Am I a fanboy for electric vehicles? I am definitely becoming a fanboy. We've got the electric bike, the electric mower, lots of electric tools, and now we even have an electric truck. So you can say I am a proponent for electric, but at the same time, I'm learning all this. I'm testing these products out myself with my own money. I'm not being given these products to review. I'm doing this with my own time. But at the end of the day, I have not regretted purchasing this mower. So I got one other thing that I wanna mention that I've really enjoyed using this mower for. It is one of my likes. It's the fact that you do have a little area in the back where you can attach a cart to this. I have used a cart that I have from Tractor Supply all over the yard. I've used it to haul dirt around. I've cut up limbs and branches and been able to put it in here. Right after we had our hurricane, I was using my cart to haul logs out to the street that I had cut up. So being able to attach a cart to this has been really awesome. And at the same time, I attach my kid's wagon to it Trust me, this is not in the manual, folks. Everything is dangerous, so don't take what I'm saying and just go do it. You have to make these decisions for yourself and your family, but for myself and my kids, we've been enjoying attaching their wagon to this and their dad giving them little tractor rides around the neighborhood. I can have my blades off and I can just use this as an actual vehicle around the yard, which is very, very handy. And to wrap it up, I'm gonna leave you with my main dislike of this vehicle is the beeping. There is a beeping that will happen when you get away from your mower, if you leave it in the on position. And remember, since it's electric, when it's on, if you're not moving, if the blades aren't running, the thing is dead silent. So the only way for you to know that you had left this on is that beeping indicator that it'll give you. It's a little frustrating. It's also very loud. As long as you're outside, you are not gonna not know that you left this on because you just heard that, right? It's like a beep, beep, three beep, four beeps, and then you get like five seconds, if that, before it happens again. I'm gonna let that keep going as we wrap up the video so you understand how annoying <laughs> this beeping is but it is quite frustrating because you can't really walk away from the mower for even a minute to go maybe pick up something out of the yard get it out of the way before you start hearing that again and i get it i understand what it is but i bet my neighbors can hear this beeping i can hear this beeping it drives me a little bit nuts but that's my one one dislike I do know I could do some digging around. I could find out where the little speaker is that's shooting out that noise, except my main concern is wondering how long this mower could actually just sit there with it being on before it actually killed the entire battery. I don't understand why they didn't just build some type of an auto shutoff function into the mower where after five minutes of no use, it just powers down and you have to kind of flip it off and back on again. I don't know if that's maybe some type of an update they could actually push to the mower via the app. 
uh, that you can actually connect to here. Um, I'll be curious to see what they say about that, but it is something that I don't like about this mower. It's not a big deal breaker though for me. It's not gonna make me not recommend this mower to somebody because of that. We're gonna turn it off though, so you don't have to finish off by listening to that. I still want you to smash that like and that subscribe button. But I hope you enjoyed this one year recap on the Ryobi 54 inch zero turn mower. I do love this thing. I'll continue to get you guys some updates. I do wanna bring you guys a video on just sharpening those blades. And at some point, I also wanna figure out a way to retrofit some type of a, like a little pulley system or a cable onto the actual uh, chute that's on the side here that allows the grass to exit the one side. Just for pulling into my garage and where I park this, it'd be nice if I could actually pull this up into a upward position to give me an extra six inches on the side there. But other than that, nothing but good things so far have come from this. I love the mower. Can't wait to get you guys some more updates and stay tuned because my next video, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a video for some of you out there that might be running a landscape business. I heard something recently and I can't speak too much of it because I don't know how true this is, that in California, they're telling landscape companies that they have to be all electric in the next X amount of years. But I'm gonna make a video for some of you out there that might be interested in starting a landscape company or converting your landscape company over to electric. Some of you already, might already be running electric blowers, electric weed eaters, chainsaws, and those so sort of tools off of electric but somebody that might be considering going to an actual riding mower i think i've got a pretty cool video that i'm going to release for you and that is going to be me using my electric truck to actually charge this mower and just show you how much time you need to get yourself to about that quarter acre mow so for somebody out there that's using something like this to mow yards throughout the day and maybe they have eight yards that they're going to mow in a single day I wanna see if it's actually economical or not for somebody to, to be able to charge their mower off of their own power that they have, like their electric vehicle, and run a business that way. But remember, Ryobi doesn't sell these for commercial use. That's not how they're touted. I still wanna bring you some information on that. I think it'll be a neat video, so stay tuned for that one. But thank you for tuning back in. Again, it's been six months. This is our one year recap and update on our Ryobi zero turn mower. Shout out to Ryobi. I think this is a pretty great product. And again, I commend Ryobi on their customer service and helping me out when I did have a bad battery when I initially got this. Since then, everything's good. We'll probably wait and do another two year recap Unless something major happens on this, everything else should be maintenance and little helpful videos from here on out. Thanks for tuning in. Hope you've enjoyed your mower. And if you don't have one yet, don't hesitate. I think it's a great mower. So if you were considering pulling the trigger, just do it. I'm out.